the curriculum is really designed around the students developing specific research projects relative to their interests because this, this umbrella of the kind of platform relations or architecture is very large. And I think that's, that's a more appropriate way for us to begin to educate future architects. How this uh, comes together as a hotbed for the next generation of innovators, I think will be just a fascinating thing to watch. I'd like to see if we could begin by uh, bracketing out uh, historical periods in uh, what's often referred to as the digital Peronian architecture. I'm a graduate of Columbia University uh, when during Bernard Schumann's time as dean, uh, they instituted the now infamous paperless studios. And uh, in retrospect, I see that as a kind of first wave of recent architectural technologies where we're just trying to figure out how to use a computer. But very quickly, uh, it turned into a problem of how to model digitally and render our work. Uh, subsequently, I see a kind of second wave and a, also a second generation uh, that emerged. And I believe uh, you're, you're part of that generation where it started moving into more complex topics of, uh, say, scripting or automating certain forms of architectural production and digital fabrication was a big part of that. And now uh, I think you and I agree that uh, we're in uh, another wave now where there might be a kind of third generation of architectural technologies. I think, I think that's a really good way of, of bracketing kind of the, the transition through, let's say these waves, really the critical application for digital techniques within architecture is uh, working with things like artificial intelligence, uh, kind of interactive game engine based development uh, so that the, the machines kind of moved out of trying to construct these kind of perfect abstract representations of some kind of architecture. Now it's like, how do we use these techniques to construct value on the information that we see in the world? How do we use it to give us a better understanding of the world that we live in? When we're talking about platforms, that's essentially an infrastructure where you can put together uh, different pieces of software, different pieces of hardware, uh, with the kind of end game of translating information as a resource into value. One of the things that's really exciting right now is the increased availability of game engines, increased availability of, of cloud-based um, computing platforms. Now we can utilize these game engines to accelerate the exploration into these digital territories. And that allows us to much more aggressively look at kind of cultural projects in relationship to them. Very excited about uh, uh, this aspect of your program. I'm very interested in how the introduction of these new kinds of technologies and the new concepts that go with them will affect uh, future uh, graduates. The curriculum is uh, designed with a couple of primary focuses. All the students in the program have a level of computational literacy that we develop in the curriculum. So a student isn't just designing a kind of material process with the robot or you know, uh, learning how to use the robot to assemble some designed element. They're looking at the robot as part of a whole stack from data analysis to automation of design production to communicating between the software and hardware. So the robot is really just like one component in this vertical stack. And I think that's that's a more appropriate way for us to begin to educate future architects. I think it's very important for uh, our students to acquire uh, a longer arc of uh, expertise that could carry them through into positions of leadership and to think about innovation uh, over the long haul of their careers. There are a lot of uh, research initiatives at the school now uh, that are focused on technology and your program is very focused on interface. SIRC has new, uh, two new research labs. Uh, one's the Platform and Automation Lab, which I'm the faculty director of. And there's also the uh, Urban Past and Futures Lab. These labs allow us to interface with projects which are kind of external to the, the school. It ranges from uh, doing projects in uh, and software development research for companies like uh, Epic, which we just received a mega grant, and they've also been doing workshops in, in our program, uh, to looking at how we can use artificial intelligence to understand urban issues and how we can get a better understanding of the way people live in the city through analyzing alternative data sets like social media. The students in our program are encouraged and have kind of first opportunity to uh, take on funded research positions in these projects. So. 
at the same time that they're they're at the school, they're also doing stipended work as part of these research projects for these kind of real world applications of the technology. Some of the future uh, students of your program out there are probably uh, veterans of uh, games like Fortnite and uh, have played uh, video games built on the Unreal game engine. And of course, Epic is the company that uh, uh, produced these new platforms. And uh, it may come as a surprise uh, to people to know that Epic is beginning to move past uh, simple uh, entertainment delivery platforms and are also beginning to speculate themselves about how their technology can change the future of design. Epic has uh, invested in the mega grant program where they're working with different institutions uh, to fund specific research about expanding essentially the the scope of the capabilities of software built off of the Unreal Engine, which is the, the game engine that they built Fortnite off of and, con and continue to use in-house. And one of those territories is in architecture and engineering um, as they're looking to see how they can make more user accessible design platforms. At SciArc, we have uh, a mega grant project run by Damian Yovanovitch, who's a, another faculty member in the program, that's looking at how he can develop predictive uh, machine learning techniques at every stage of the 3D modeling process. And in addition, the um, uh, Tom Shannon from Epic has been uh, doing a series of workshops with students in our program to give them the kind of best practices for how to work with these, these types of real-time simulations, procedural modeling, uh, and interactive game development. It, it was uh, very interesting for me to meet somebody like Henrik McDowell, who uh, was a frequent visitor to your program. To, begin to understand how he's thinking about these technologies from a cultural interface point of view. I think uh, we're beginning to see that there's some other large scale deployment of a certain form of architectural thinking. We have been investing in this too. We've been building out the platform and automation lab, which includes uh, really high power GPU workstations so that students aren't limited to the types of um, artificial intelligence projects they can work on. This is going to accelerate things like robot at the tail end of the, the kind of AI-based um, design stack, but also we can use it to start to simulate and set up environments to test or urban scanning, urban uh, material studies. You know, one of the things that's become an interest for our program is how do we design cities to interface with these uh, these uh, non-human forms of perception, which are now becoming ubiquitous with them, from UAVs to surveillance to 5G communication. So we can use this robot facility to, to begin to speculate on mocking up these environments and test out different design strategies. Can you tell us a little bit about what some of your graduates are doing out in the world? Our program has a really diverse um, set of career paths. Some of our students are in academic positions. They've gone on to teaching positions at other institutions where they're carrying on this research. And some of our students are working in some of the top design offices, um, often here in LA, but also internationally and nationally, and then some of our students are working in software development. I have former students that are coordinating app development for media companies here in Los Angeles, uh, and we also have students that are doing uh, product design and looking at how to integrate advanced technology and advanced software techniques that they developed here into the design of things like um, like footwear. For example, Nikita Trufanova at, at Nike did a, a whole string of shoes where he was really able to implement um, some of the software explorations he began to develop down here at Cyric into um, footwear, which is now out on the market. Why is it so important for this program to be in Los Angeles? Los Angeles is, I think, the, I think the epicenter of design culture uh, around technology. If, if you're looking at the kind of trends within the larger tech firms, the tech startups, um, when they're looking at where they need to open um, a design-oriented branch, it's in Los Angeles. And I think a lot of that has to do with um, a very rich dialogue between the city and its design schools over the years. If you look at the kind of immediate impact that graduates can have on the fabric of Los Angeles, it, it's, it's pretty huge in comparison to other locations. So that puts us at the epicenter of the motion fiction industry, the technology industry, um, the most kind of radical architecture schools in the country, and the most dynamic city in the country. And I can't think of any city in the U.S. where uh, a designer can have a more immediate impact on the urban fabric than in Los Angeles. Technology has uh, found its capital in uh, Southern California uh, for a very long time. And I think uh, uh, we would like to see this program be uh, a continuation of that history.